Okay, my clock just switched to two o'clock Eastern, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Welcome to all of you who have joined us today. My name is Patricia Julianell. I am the Senior Strategist for Program Advancement and Legal Affairs at Schoolhouse Connection. Um, and I have with me Deidre Harad, who will introduce herself in just a moment. Uh, just before we get started, I wanna make sure everyone knows that we do not have any handouts for today's webinar, so no need to download anything or worry about that. We're trying a different format today. We're gonna to keep it shorter and we're gonna keep it more conversational. Um, we're gonna hear some great wisdom from Deidre and then give you all an opportunity to ask questions and share your wisdom and uh, what you're doing that's working as well. Um, so let's go again ahead and get started. Good afternoon, Deidre, welcome. Um, can you tell us all a little bit about yourself and your school? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Deidre Harad. I'm the Director of Student Support at LAYC Career Academy, which is Latin American Youth Center Career Academy here in Washington, DC. We are in the Columbia Heights area. So if you know anything about DC, we're, we're right in the hub of everything. The LAYC Career Academy is a school that caters to disconnected youth ages 16 to 24 by providing a college preparatory GED curriculum and the opportunity to gain college credits before graduation. The school is built upon three central beliefs that all youth can and must obtain either a college degree or industry recognized credential. Students grow by recognizing their own strengths, using them to overcome obstacles and setting and achieving academic and career goals. And third, disconnected youth will succeed academically and personally with the help of high quality cultural appropriate education and support services. So that's us in a little nutshell there. Thank you very much for that intro to your, to your uh, really cool and innovative school. Um, I wanted to ask you a few questions about how you all are dealing with uh, the various challenges that the COVID-19 pandemic is posing. So the first question I have for you is, can you tell us a little bit about what you all are doing to find and re-engage those students who have not connected to distance learning and or are not attending any in-person options that you might have available? Okay, everyone knows that since the pandemic, it has been a challenge um, to engage our students. Um, I think at LAYC Career Academy, we've done almost everything itself for put out an APB. We, we call students, we've been reaching out by um, last known number, email, contacting emergency contact, um, check in comments from our school social media. Um, actually, the, uh, my team, which is the student support team, we even go on social media. So if we're looking for a student, we might you know, know what their nickname is or put their real name in and kind of catch up with them on social media, Instagram and Facebook. So that has worked for us. That's great. Um, I definitely have been talking to people who, you know, previously there were, if not an official policy, at least an unofficial policy that, you know, we don't do social media with students, we don't Instagram our students, but, you know, we've got to meet them where they are and that's where they are. So I'm glad that you've been able to do that. And because of our, because our students are in like a different age group, um, some of our students engage with us because um, our school do, does have an Instagram page. So some of our students relate to us that way. So it works for us. That's great, that's great. Um, are there any other ways that you're reaching out to families and students? Yes, we're reaching out to students by, um, we've been opening up our school. We are in distance learning. We've been open up, opening up our school for the um, school community. So if they have any current needs like groceries, toiletries, if they have children, if they need pampers, formula, we are providing those things for our students. We're also providing resources and referrals um, for um, medical, um, mental health services. Um, all of those things that our students are in need of right now even help with paying rent. So um, we've been opening our doors and providing those services to our students. 
That's great. That's really, really great. Again, I'm trying to provide those needs that people are really experiencing. Um, so, you know, when, when I think about why most students come to school, it's probably not mostly for the academics or the math class. I mean, for some kids it is, for others it's their peers and they want to see their friends, they want to do their, their extracurriculars, whatever it is. But when you're in distance learning, a lot of that appealing part of school kind of falls away. You don't have that anymore. So I'm wondering what you all are doing to draw students into classes and keep them motivated to attend school in this very strange attendance environment that we have. So what we've been working with is um, because of everything that's been going on with the pandemic and the age of our students, a lot of students have had to work because either their parents lost their job or they've had some type of loss during the pandemic. So what we um, started doing is our students that have jobs and they were working during the day, we came up with an alternative schedule. So if a student has a job, they bring us their pay stub, their weekly schedule, and they can still do their school. They have to at least do 12 hours per week. That has helped. Um, we've been doing one-on-one -on -one tutoring, um, asynchronous learning where um, students are learning on their own time. They go back, if during the day, if they have a small child or they're helping siblings with their schoolwork, they could go back at night and look at the pre-recorded lesson and submit um, work. Or also they could do it on the weekend because if they're working all week and they have children and they, whatever their circumstances is, we're trying to meet it. So students um, attend us and put in a week at a time. So they give students time to do their um, assignments and turn them in. So we're not taking attendance daily because that would um, require students to turn in their assignments on the same day. So they have seven days to complete assignments and turn them in and get credit for their days. So it's you know, been working that, really yeah. well. Yeah, I love the, I mean, I love everything you just said. I, I love, I was thinking about the asynchronous piece because even for me as an adult and I, you know, I'm very fortunate. I have all the infrastructure I need, but I'm, I'm doing a class and I find on my internet, a lot of times this time of day, the signal really slows down. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for me, it's great because I can get online at 10 o'clock at night and I can do my lessons and it doesn't matter. And I, and I get a really good signal. And I was thinking that, you know, it might be the same for a lot of our students who might be in motels or in other areas mm -hmm. where their signal is just not good enough during the day to participate. But, that, you know, and, and for, for youth who might be up at two in the morning anyway, because at least my niece is like that. She's like nocturnal, <laughs> basically. She can get on at 2 a.m. and do her work and have that strong signal. And at our school, we also have case management. So if a student is in need of something, um, everyone at the school has a school cell phone. So um, we have a little longer hours for students. Um, our regular school day is from nine to three, but staff are on, um, on until about 4.30. But if students have some type of issue after that time, they can always give us a call. If we're not available immediately, we will return their calls. Um, there's many times where I get phone calls at six, seven, eight o'clock at night, and I just answer it and you know help the student out. So um, we're trying to cater to our students, and we were doing that before the pandemic. So it, it's it's been going well. That's great. I see we have some questions coming into the questions pane, and that is fantastic. Please keep typing your questions in. I think I have just two more questions for uh, Deidre, and then it's going to be your turn. So keep typing those questions in. Um, let's see, the, I let two last questions I have for you are, first of all, um, are there any key partners either in your school or in your community that are really helping you engage students, engage families, and keep connected? Well, we have a few key players at Career Academy. Um, one of our number one um, connectors is the LAYC. Um, they provide mental health services and a plethora of other things that um, our students have access to. Um, also, the, the food bank, the diaper bank, that's where we're getting our diapers and formula. 
Sometimes we're getting clothing, toiletries for babies, which is wonderful because our students need that. Um, a place called Mary Center. They provide assistance with medical insurance and medical services. Another one is DC um, Kids Ride Free, which is a smart trip card for students under the age of 21 to um, get transportation within DC, Virginia and Maryland 24 seven. So any day of the week um, on the weekends and it's free of charge. So students could get where they need to go. Um, also DC has an adult subsidy um, smart trip and that's for adult students over 21 that are enrolled in any school. It gives a monthly subsidized um, transportation card so those students could get back and forth to school or do whatever they need to do. It's not unlimited like the kids ride free because there's no top on that one, but for the adult subsidy over 21, I think the um, I think the subsidy is about 80 or 90 dollars a month, but it still helps. Also, um, we have a bike share program in, out in DC, so students could transport that way with the bikes, the scooters, and there's one more thing I can't think of it right now, but those are some of them our main um, participant partners right now. That's great. That's great. Um, okay. Wow. We have so many questions coming in the questions pane. This is great. I, I get one more and then I, I'm going to okay. turn it over to the questions pane and we're going to take some questions from our group here. Um, and you already started talking about this, but I just wonder if you had anything else you wanted to say about attendance, because this is an issue I'm hearing so much about how are you calculating attendance, which you already talked about a little bit and the flexibility for students who just can't connect to classes, whether it's because of technology, work, like you said, other issues. Um, just wanna reiterate that attendance is calculated when the student attends class. So the student not only has to attend class, but they have to submit work. They can't just show up and, okay, I'm here and I want credit. No, you have to submit some work. You have to work towards that. And hours are taken. So hours are submitted for um, the different platforms that students work on. So I know one in particular, well, there are a few platforms. There's Aztec, there's um, Google Classroom, and we have an IT and an MA program. So, um, students are working on various platforms and their time is taken and they are submitting classwork to their teachers so that's how we um, calculate the attendance that's great okay i'm going to jump over to the questions pane because a lot of people have more questions um and also okay. so please everyone please do type your questions in and also um if you have answers to some of the questions that i asked Deidre, if you want to tell us how you're doing attendance how are you doing outreach? How are you engaging students? Go ahead and type that in too, and then I can add that into the conversation because I know we have a lot of wisdom on this on this webinar of people to share. Um, so here's just an example of a piece of wisdom that Nicole typed in. We have created a staggered teacher schedule so students have access to the teacher during the AM and the PM, which is a great idea because maybe not That's every teacher wants yeah, right. You know, maybe not everybody wants to be on call 20 hours a day, but you can divide it up. That's great. Yeah, that is nice. Okay, we have some questions for you, Deidre, about how you're paying for some of these things. So the, the monthly cell phone bill for the students. Um, that for the students, was, for, the, yeah. for the staff, for the staff. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, for the staff. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, Great. Are there other services? There was something else you mentioned now that I forgot, a service that you were providing when you were talking about the diapers and the food. And I know you get those from the food and the diaper bank. Oh, you said yes. you're helping pay rent. Where are you getting the money to help pay rent? So what we did was there were a few grants that were available at the beginning of the pandemic. So we <clears> applied <throat> to those grants and then we had our students apply through us. So it was almost like a referral process, but we were because um, maybe about 50% of our um, population are immigrants. So some of them weren't able to cash in on like, um, when, uh, gosh, I can't, it's escaping me right now. But when people were given um, the $1,200 or the $600. Oh, right, the stimulus check, the right. Stimulus, right, thank you so very much. 
some of those people did not qualify. Some of our students didn't qualify. So um, we, we just looked at some other resources and helped uh, quite a few students with like one or two months of rent. But that wasn't something directly from us. That was a grant that was provided to um, some schools in the area, some charter schools. So that's how we were able to help our students with that. Okay, great. That's a great opportunity. Um, we've got a, a question about attendance. Um, you mentioned, you know, 12 hours a week. Do you find that having that very clear boundary, like you've got to do 12 hours a week, that that, um, just that clarity helps? And what, what happens if a student misses 12 hours a week? Sort of what's your intervention? What's your follow-up? So um, I'm not over that program. I, I, most, I don't do any of the academic piece. Um, but what we try to do, our students, most of our students are really motivated because remember, we're talking about 16 to 24, and those students that are in the alternative program, which requires 12 hours, are usually over 18. So they're trying to get housing, they have children, so they have those motivations to, to not only work, but they are trying to get past that. They're trying to get their GED. They're trying to get an MA or IT certification. So they have that um, self-motivation. So they're signing at 10 o'clock at night or 11 o'clock at night because they are working towards that end. So um, sometimes we have problems, but when we do have problems, we kind of meet with students and say, hey, okay, this is this is your plan. Let's see how we can help you fulfill this plan? Do you need to, you know, do more hours on the weekends? And the students will let us know, like, they'll say, Ms. Harat, you know what? I had a busy week last week. I was only able to put in like six or seven hours, but I'm going to make it up next week. And when we okay. see the students try, you know, we're, we're more willing to say, oh, okay, you know what? We know it's hard sometimes, but, you know, we're going to stick in here with you and, hey, we need you to go ahead and put those 12 hours in. So, Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, and I think this is a perfect follow-up because someone says, I love your energy and enthusiasm, uh, which Thank I think you. I agree, um, and is asking a good question about staff more than students. How do you keep your staff spirits up and your own spirits up so that you're able to do this hard work of reaching out to students, taking that phone call at 730 at night? Um, what's going on for just that maintenance of, of your mental health and your staff? I think you really have to have the heart to do it. Not only that, um, in my staff, it's a staff of four, we always try to motivate each other. We give um, self-care tips every morning, like every morning, like, good morning, how are you? How's everybody doing? We just making sure that we are engaged as a team because if we're not engaged as a team, we, can, we can't help our students. So we, we understand that every day we are here to help. And some days when we have hard days, we'll let each other know. And they are like, you know, I'll tell them, look, I have a really busy day today. Um, and my staff will say, hey, what you need help with? So our whole point is being healthy and engaged so we could be, help our students be healthy and engaged. That's really, really true. I mean, we have to be a team amongst ourselves so that we can be yes. a team with our students and families. Yeah, for sure. So you've talked a lot about different community resources you've been able to access from funding to, you know, the diapers, the Metro cards. What are your tips for somebody who's maybe just starting out with community collaborations? How do you find these organizations? How do you start the conversation to build those community uh, collaborations? So a lot of the community collaborations we had or we currently have is because we was a community school. So we had funding. So um, mm -hmm. we're no longer a community school, but we, we're still nurturing those relationships. So some of the things we are still doing. Um, so like I said, a lot of that stuff came through community. A lot of those partnerships came through community schools and just getting out being a part of your community. You'll find out so many things. We had um, a vision truck come to our school 
and was able to give away, um, do vision screens and give away free glasses, a dental truck. So it's just about being out there, getting involved and knowing what's in your community. Very good tips. I find sometimes also, you know, the students and parents know about resources too. Yes. So they share back with you and then you can share that back out with the next student who has that same issue or, or somebody else who's coming along. Or even when you're talking to your referrals, like I might talk to a therapist and they might say, you know what, Ms. Harat, we can't service that student, but here's, here's a referral to another place that I know about that's really good. Why don't you try connecting with them? So um, word of mouth, is, is a wonderful thing because we get a lot of our resources that way also. Great, great suggestion. So we have another, um, another good practice coming in. Someone is recommending or saying that they use Google Voice for their families. And I've heard that before for people who maybe don't have that work phone and you're not, you don't necessarily want the entire city to have your home phone number, or your personal cell number, so you can use that Google Voice. That's a yes. good idea. Um, Here's a question. Oh, this is a really interesting question. Um, how are you connect? And you might not know this. This might be a little bit outside your area, but I'm going to ask anyway. How are you connecting each student's unique lived experiences to their curriculum? Kind of a specific question. So I don't, it's fine if you don't, if that's outside of your bailiwick, as they say. That may be a, a more of an academic question, but we do. Um, do individualized planning. We do individualized learning plan plans with ah. our students. So we are constantly connecting with our students uh, regarding behavior, attendance, academics. And so that's something that's covered not only with myself, but with the teachers and the director of academics, the principal. So we have a small school, so we are able to do that. Um, I'm not sure how um, practical it would be for larger schools to kind of do that individual learning plan. That but sounds like a great, uh, it sounds just like a great structure also so, you know, so that each student is moving towards his or her goals too. Yes. Like you, like yes. you said, whether that's a certificate in an, in a, or an apprenticeship or a high school degree or whatever it is. Yes. That's great. Um, have you heard, and this might be different region by region, um, but have you heard of any grants specifically for internet access that have been helpful to you that other people might be able to grab onto in their communities? Well, I know in the DC, in DC, they have something called Internet Essentials, which is ran by, I'm not sure if it's Verizon, I'm not sure what cable company, but if um, the student qualifies, or either TANF or other social services that they could get free internet. So they have to have a student in the household in K through 12, and it was just expanded in the DC area to adults that are in school. So it, it I think it does kind of um, vary region to region, but in DC, yes, we do have one of those. It's called Internet Essentials. And you know, now that you mentioned that, I'm sure that's a federal program. That's so that so that should be available around the country. And we have on on Schoolhouse Connections website, we have a a web a web page specifically dedicated to COVID-19 resources. And it's really easy to find if you just go to schoolhouseconnection.org. Um, you can find our COVID-19 page. It's just one link away from the home page. And we do have um, a document there on keeping in touch with families and we have the link there i know that we have the link for that federal program on there so i'm okay. glad you mentioned that um let's see uh with just a general question about your school in particular what's the staff to student ratio at your school if you know we teeter about 150 and i think we have maybe about 25 staff okay yeah okay that's a good I relationship think we have about 25 staff yeah okay great um thank you for that we have some um some more tips coming in that i'm going to read out loud so everyone can hear them um one person is saying the pandemic really has taught us to be super flexible and meet our mm -hmm. students and families where they are 
Yes. Um, I hope that's a lesson that we're all learning that we can carry on even after whenever it happens that things go back to normal, we all go back to school, that we can we can keep that in mind because people are still going to be getting over trauma and economic problems. And, you know, even when we go back to school, there's still going to be a lot of challenges for sure. Mm -hmm. And I think the number one way to connect with students is uh, and I say this all the time to everybody everywhere I go. Gaining a rapport with a student is so important. That will open doors you didn't know could be open. It opened doors and it opens windows. So um, just, you know, gain that rapport with students. Make sure that you are asking them about more than just their academics. That's really important. Ask them how they're doing. If you know they have children, ask them how their children are doing. Uh, just anything to engage the students. And when you need information from the students, they are more apt to open up to you if you're asking how they're doing on a regular basis and not just basing your relationship on academics. That is so true. It's, it's not that hard to show that we care in, a, in an appropriate way and, and so important, so yes. important. A few other tips coming in. Uh, someone suggests this is a great and easy tip. Suggest using star 67 before calling a phone number and that'll block the number you're calling from. So if you're on a personal cell, that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, someone says small and personal puts the human back in humanity. I think that's a good compliment to what you just said. A yes. lot of people are recommending Comcast. Um, as an internet company okay. that offers internet essentials. So again, depending on where you are and what you have in your community, mm -hmm. but um, a lot of people are typing in that Comcast um, is a good place to go. And someone actually put the link in here that I am going to put into the chat box so that everybody can see it. Here's a link to the internet essentials program. So thank you for sharing that, Kim. I got to share that back out with everybody. Um, we have a school district here that is offering hotspot connection adapters. That's and we great. offer hotspots also to our students. Good, good, so important. Um, and here, Nicole is saying we created an ILP advisory course that is driven by the teacher. So teachers meet with students weekly. They check on academic progress, testing, career and technical mm -hmm. ed, and most importantly, a wellness check. Okay, that sounds That's cool. great, Nicole. That's very similar to our, um, our plan, uh, individualized learning plan, but also um, for the, stu um, the people that work in my department, which are called S3s, which are student support specialists, we connect with our students every morning. So every morning they get a text from us, good morning, how are you doing? We are offering resources. This month is Black History Month. We're sending out like little known black history facts, all of those types of things to keep our students engaged. So they are not only engaged with their teacher, but they're engaged with their case manager or S3. So they're always getting that voice. They're always getting that chat or text or whatever to keep the student engaged. I love that idea, that daily check-in. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Let's see, a couple more people writing in here. I love using Google Voice so families can text me and we can have a conversation. Texting, I mean, for the youth that we work with through our scholarship program, for us, it's all about text, Snapchat. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody wants to talk to me on the phone. Nobody. The phone is like for old people. So we got to do the texting and the snap and all that stuff. Um, uh, we have people who are talking about doing home visits to connect with families. Um, and I know that I've heard of people doing um, like curbside visits because mm -hmm. you know, with COVID, you want to have that distance, but you can still have a physical contact, but from a few feet away, we could do that. Yes, and I, it's so much that we're doing and I didn't remember to write everything down, but that did jog my memory. Um, some students that were having um, computer issues, we had one of our teachers go out and kind of meet with them to troubleshoot. Also, some students didn't do really well on the internet or using the computer at first, so they wanted paperwork. So we had a paraprofessional go out and take them work and collect the work again. Students that could not come into the school, we had a delivery service. 
that would drop off pampers and um, groceries, but it was a volunteer service. So um, those were some of the other things that we've been doing at our school to help our students during this really challenging time. Well, someone here typed in, uh, Deidre, you have the most wonderful countenance and just seeing your face is inspiring. I agree 100% with that. So that's, I, I don't think anybody could disagree with that comment. So thank you for sending that in, Debbie. Um, and we are actually at time. So um, I want to thank you, Deidre. This was so fun. And to everybody who typed in questions and comments, thank you for participating. Uh, we wanted to try this more relaxed format, just a little bit of social connection um, for just a few minutes in your day. So hopefully this was valuable. Um, DJ, thank you so much for your time and for participating with us. Thank you so much. It's been a joy. And I'm going to leave everyone with something that Marianne typed in. Kids don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So I think that's a good I thing totally to leave agree. us with. Yes.